Let's bring in SABC News Assignment Editor Ayanda Mshongo now for more. Ayanda, thank you so much for your time. Now, earlier we saw Police Minister Peggy Kele just paying his last respects, you know, to Mr. Mtetwa. Talk to us about some of the key things that he said. Well, that's a very good afternoon to you and good afternoon to the viewers at home. Yes, well, that uh, important message um, and tribute by the Minister of uh, Police, Begi Gail, of course, Unati, just to take it a little bit backwards. Um, community members were not too happy um, that he was here um, today saying that um, they're tired of um, empty promises, that it's not for the first time that the police minister has uh, visited um, this area to try and deal with this issue of a crime that is ravaging uh, this community. In fact, they're saying that since 1994, every police minister um, or, uh, in, in South Africa has come to this area and uh, the pleas and the cries of this community have fallen on deaf ears. Minister of Police Peggy Kele acknowledging uh, the failures of a government and acknowledging that this situation, he said that this situation is abnormal and calls for action and calls for a change. He has said to this community of course that one of the uh, grievances has been that um, the number of vehicles that are being stolen in South Africa and smuggled across to Mozambique. Some members of this community in fact the late uh, Judah Mteto led a group of uh, business people and community members to Mozambique and we understand that they found vehicles still with a South African registration numbers. Some have been driven around in Mozambique. Others were found at the police pounds uh, in Mozambique. And so there has been this call from this community to urging government to meet with their counterparts in Mozambique so that they can work together. That South Africa alone or KwaZulu-Natal alone is not going to be able to deal with this issue of cross-border crimes. It's one that affects not only South Africa, but is also affecting uh, Mozambique and uh, as well. Minister now reporting to uh, the uh, community that he has met with his counterpart uh, from Mozambique. Of course, he says that it was uh, the first of many engagements uh, still to come and uh, that he hoped that uh, he is going to visit this community very shortly and he's then going to give uh, them an update as to where the discussions uh, um, are uh, in terms of the cooperation and the work between South African authorities and that from Mozambique. But he's saying that of course what also needs to happen is that a lot of the attention and the calls are directed at the police and the community um, criticizing the work that is being done by the police and the minister saying that uh, this needs to be a joint effort and since that other departments need to come on board the uh, minister of home affairs also needs uh, to come on board the minister of international relations and cooperation also needs to come on board the minister of justice also needing to come on board and he's saying that um, this is the discussion that he, they have to have with the president so that um, all these ministers can visit um, the area of Manguzi and uh, they can be uh, um, a plan um, of all these departments that need uh, to work together if they're going uh, to uh, bring an end uh, to the crime in this um, area. Uh, the, the community of course clapping um, um, at times, um, um, heckling the minister at, at times, not happy with uh, some of uh, the, the uh, points of what he was saying, uh, because they're simply tired, um, Unati, um, they have been saying that on their side, as community members, they have done everything possible um, to make the call uh, to government. They've written letters, they've protested, uh, they've done everything that they can. They have been working with uh, the police. In fact, the late Sipom Teto, uh, Judah Teto, who is being laid to rest uh, today, was in the forefront of fighting crime in the this community working with um, the police uh, whatever information that the community members were able to get about these syndicates how these syndicates are operating this is information that the community are saying over the years has been shared uh, with the police and uh, nothing has been done another important point is that um, 
after, in 2019, um, after former President Jacob Zuma visited this area, one of the measures that government had said we're going to put in place was to put up a Jersey barriers. These are large concrete, uh, 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 a large concrete wall um, that was then going to be uh, built or installed um, along the border between KwaZulu-Natal and Mozambique. That project um, has not been completed and of course there are uh, challenges and, and, um, and, and issues there as well. This is another point that has been raised by the community to say there was a promise that government had made and it given itself a timeline um, that the Jersey barriers were going to be put up and that was one way that um, and the community members agreed was going to help so that the vehicles would not be able uh, to be smuggled to Mozambique and counterfeit goods and stolen goods um, smuggled into Mozambique and goods from Mozambique um, into uh, South Africa. So the, you find a community at this point that is really at its wit's end. They are tired of the promises that government um, has made. And I'm just going to step out of shot, Onati, just so that our viewers can, can see the numbers of people that have come out here today. This is not just the community of Manguzi, but people that have come out here to pay their tributes uh, to Judam Tetra, but also uh, people that um, uh, uh, want the government to see that this issue of crime in this area is affecting not just the community in Manguzi, but it's affecting neighboring communities. And the messages that we've we heard, over 20 speakers um, that made their tribute and made messages today, and the message was clear that um, people are tired, that something needs to happen and calls, making an impassionate plea uh, to the police and to government to step up their efforts uh, in the fight against crime. And one of the messages uh, uh, that's quite important that stood out is that some of the local leaders here were saying that this is not a fight just for the people of Mangosi, but this should be a fight of all South Africans because they have found that there are vehicles that are stolen in Johannesburg, vehicles that are stolen as far as Cape Town, stolen or hijacked, and uh, they make their way through uh, through uh, this border. In fact, we're about two kilometers away uh, from the Agosi Bay border. And so they're saying that uh, there is a possibility that somebody will be killed when that vehicle has been hijacked, that somebody will be killed when that vehicle is stolen. And so they are saying that this not, should not be just a fight for the people of Mangosi, but this should really uh, uh, raise the alarm to all South Africans that they need to come together and work with this community to bring an end uh, to this crime. Onati, we've heard some terrible stories um, of what these gangs are doing. And the community is saying that they are so brazen that they enter into people's homes, whether it's at night, during the day, they hold family hold families hostage. Um, there's reports that women um, and children are being raped during the commission of uh, these crimes. So it's now not just the fact that these syndicates are targeting four by four vehicles, um, but these cr criminals are now entering into people's homes and they are stealing whatever it is they can get um, uh, from families. We were speaking earlier on to Dr. Kwabe, who uh, is part, worked with uh, the late Dudam Teto, and he said that he has been a victim of this crime twice now um, and he read, it relayed a, a horrific story of how he together with his pastor and his wife uh, were, were, were kidnapped and uh, dumped along the border and their vehicle was then smuggled into Mozambique. He went on to find his car, uh, he's found the car in Mozambique but it's been months that he's been trying to work with authorities to get his vehicle back home. So we've really heard some very uh, difficult and touching stories uh, from the these uh, community members here who are saying Unati, that the situation is so bad that they are all uh, prisoners um, in their homes. Uh, another point is the fact that people are saying they're so scared, even leaving this funeral now, going back to their homes. Uh, they're saying that they're not sure whether or not they're going to be next, whether or not these killers uh, or these criminals are going to target uh, them next. So this is a quite a dire situation, Unati. Um, the community um, under siege by these uh, criminal gangs. I suppose in the next coming months uh, or weeks rather uh, the minister has said that he is going to return uh, to this community uh, and outline what he says is probably going to be uh, a plan as to how they're going uh, to deal uh, with crime i can also mention unati that in and around the area there has been an increase in police visibility we've seen uh, additional members of the south african national uh, defense force there are also um, police units that have also been deployed they're monitoring the main uh, road 
roads and there's been increased patrols along the um, uh, along the border but uh, community saying while that is welcomed but it has come little too late for someone like Judah Mteto. Onati? A sad and dire situation indeed, Ayanda. Thank you so much uh, for your time this afternoon. Of course, that was Ayanda Mflongo coming to us live there from KZN SABC News Assignments Editor at the funeral there of crime fighter Judah Mtetu.